Good morning, everybody. Uh, Good morning, Dante. Last week we could not have uh, internet. Uh, our Zoom talk because uh, there was an uh, internet failure. Four days we did not have internet. Oh. And uh, good morning, uh, Dante. Good morning. Fortunately, today we have internet. Okay. Happy Vasana. Eh? Happy Vasana. Happy Vasana. You did. <laughs> when are you coming? I'm coming uh, this week. I'm coming on Wednesday. Okay. <laughs> Wednesday. Okay. Now we have a retreat going on, youth retreat. Right. Uh, there are not too many people. It's still five minutes. <laughs> Chitra. Hey, Bhante. Very good. Frank, Padmini, Bertram. Okay. In the land. I see lots of people uh, watch later on YouTube. Yes. Um, yes, this is, uh, hello, my three. Tiruvan Saranai, I'm Durani. Tiruvan Saranai. Ko Nona Putala, I have not. And Te I'm Durani. Sabagi, you know. Yes. Then you got connect wavy. Last week we could not have because the internet didn't work last week. Uh -huh. Oh, that's what happened. We were look, waiting. Yeah, we were worried. We were waiting and we were also thinking what happened. We are waiting for some other people. How many? Both last week, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Saturday and Sunday, both last week. We could not have it because of the yeah. internet mm -hmm. failure. Okay. It took more than four days we uh, did not have internet. Good mm. morning, Bante. Good morning. Uh, Now we start in two minutes. Let us wait for two more minutes. Huh? Okay. Good morning, Banteji. Good morning. Let me get my speaker closer. Anyway. Now you treat it is going on now. Okay. Yeah, but uh, we can start our talking. <clears throat> okay. Today we are going to talk on uh, this course called Thayo Dhamma Sutta. Thayo Dhamma means three Dhammas. There are sets of uh, 
can uh, each having three three of ten three into ten thirty dhammas we find this in Anguttara Nikaya in the tenth section called Dasaka Nipata. Dasaka means ten, tenth. And the name of the discourse is Thayodhamma. And it starts with this because if three things are not found in the world, <coughs> enlightened one, the Arahant, fully self-awakened one will not appear in the world, nor will the teaching and the training proclaimed by the enlightened one. And that Dhamma also will not shine. So on the one hand, Buddha will not appear in the world if these three things are not in the world. When the Buddha does not appear in the world, the teaching or Dhamma will not shine. So for both these, for Buddha to appear and the Dhamma to shine, there must be three things. What are the three things? <coughs> Very common three things. <laughs> they are jati, jara, marana. Birth, aging and death. That is that means, in other words, suffering in the Four Noble Truths, Buddha explained suffering. He said birth is suffering, decay, aging is suffering, and death is suffering. Since suffering exists in these forms, Buddhas come into existence and their Dhamma shines. Among many uh, characteristics of suffering, three main things are inevitable. Other, others sometimes we can avoid. <clears throat> but these three things nobody can avoid. That is the birth, aging and death. Since we are born, we age. As we age, we die. That is common universal factor. Nobody can stop it. So the Buddha appears in the world to show this. And he explained it, he explained this in, um, for 45 years in 84,000 sermons. Why so many sermons? To explain this called suffering. Why so many? One word is enough. One sermon is enough. But so many sermons he delivered. Why? Because there were so many people with so many temperaments, so many different stages of education, intelligence, wisdom, sadda, virya, sati, samadhi, 
Panya, Faith, Effort, Mindfulness, Concentration, Wisdom, they are, their state of uh, mental states are different. And Buddha explained these three things for the suffering in many, many different ways. Uh, that is very deep subject, but I don't. I'm not going to explain all it because we have uh, nine more sets. This is the first set. The first set is if birth, aging, and death. And then is then the second set. If I have more time, I I go to. Uh, explain them in detail. Within this short time, let me try to point out these things uh, somewhat briefly. Monks, without giving up these three things, one, one will not be able to give up birth, aging and death. So birth, aging and death exist, but we cannot, we, we can end them. We can end them. We can end them only if we have three things. What are the three? So first the Buddha said, monks, without giving up these three things, one cannot get rid of birth, aging, and death. What are the three things? Greed, hatred, and delusion. Greed, hatred, and delusion are the three main unwholesome roots. Three roots. With greed, if one dies, one definitely will be born in one life in another life, very miserable life, unhappy life. If one dies with hatred, one will be born in a very miserable place, very painful state. When one will die with confusion, one will be born in a miserable place. Don't think that with greed we will be reborn again as human being. No way. Or you will be born as human beings if you die with hatred. No way. If you die with uh, confusion, you will not, not be born as human beings. And therefore birth Aging and death, Buddha talk at least about human beings. Other beings, birth, aging and death is uh, uh, not even, can we can even talk about. But without giving, if we can manage to give up greed, hatred and delusion, then it is possible for us to get rid of birth, aging, and death. That is second set. I will explain all these things in more detail, as I said, as we go on, if we have more time. I can go through all these things once again. Then there was the third set. Third set is monks, Without giving up three things, one will not be able to give up greed, hatred, and delusion. See, this is a very wonderful way of teaching. This is dependent origination. He explained in a different way. Dependent origination. Uh, one will not be able to give up greed, hatred, and delusion without giving up three things. What are the three things? They are 
ಸಕ್ಕಾಯದೀತಿ ವಿಚಿಗೀಚ ಶೀಲಭೃತ ಪರಾಮಾಸ ಸಕ್ಕಾಯದೀತಿ ಸದ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಖಾಯ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಬಾಡಿ ದೀತಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ರಾಂಗ್ ವ್ಯೂ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ರಾಂಗ್ ವ್ಯೂ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಬಾಡಿ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಕೈಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ರಾಂಗ್ ವ್ಯೂಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಬಾಡಿ ನಾಟ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಬಾಡಿ ಫೀಲಿಂಗ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಪ್ಷನ್ ಥಾಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ದೆ ಆರ್ ಕೋಲ್ ಫೈವ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಗೇಟ್ಸ್ ನಾವು ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಐಡೆಂಟಿಟಿ ವ್ಯೂ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಸಮ್ಮನ್ ಮೇ ಬಿಲೀವ್ ದ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ವೇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಬಿಲೀವ್ ದಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಈಸ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ವೇಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಟೇಕ್ ದ ಫೈವ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಗೇಟ್ಸ್ ಬಾಡಿ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಆರ್ ಐಡೆಂಟಿಕಲ್ that is one and then one would think self has a body or body has a self or self and body are different self has a body body has a self self and body are identical self and body are different now four you multiply the five by four then you get 20 with regard to feeling feeling and self identical feeling is in in the self self is in the feeling and feeling and self are separate so is with perception volitional formations and consciousness consciousness and self are identical self is in consciousness consciousness is in self or self and consciousness are different separate so this is how we get 20 kind of view this is a totally wrong view because as everything always permanently impermanent in that permanently impermanent something there cannot be something permanent if everything is impermanent that is the first premise in silology that buddha used to prove that there is no self buddha asked monks because the body is permanent or impermanent impermanent when rebirth that which is impermanent satisfactory or unsatisfactory unsatisfactory when rebirth that which is impermanent unsatisfactory subject to change is it correct to say that this is this uh, is mine this is this, this i am this is myself no wonder about sir so he went on asking these three sets of questions and concluded that there is no self no self not even shadow of self and yet some people believe that there is self it is all right for us to use the word self as conventional term we use i you he she and so forth these are accepted universally accepted terms to use for communication that we do that would also accept but to believe that there is something permanent is 
totally wrong. Now, that is one, number one. So one has to give up Shakkai Dritti means fear. Second is uh, Vichikicca, doubt. Doubt about the Buddha, doubt about the Dhamma, doubt about Sangha, doubt about uh, morality, doubt about the previous life, doubt about the future life, and uh, uh, doubt about uh, existence of noble ones, holy ones, arahants, enlightened ones, and so forth. This kind of doubt is very, very dangerous because people doubt or say of certain things because their wisdom eye is not open, mind is not clean, impure. With this impure state of mind, can you see the truth? Can you see everything? Suppose there is a water with all kind of colors. Can you see the bottom of that water? If the water is uh, is having a lot of waves shaking, can you see the something very clearly at the bottom? Suppose there's a diamond or gold or something valuable at the bottom, can you see that? You cannot. And also the fact that you don't see something doesn't mean that it exists. It doesn't exist. People don't see everything. Not seeing everything doesn't mean that something does not exist. Therefore, people having doubt about those things also blocks your spiritual growth. Your path will never become clear if you have doubt. So, so long as you have doubt, you cannot get rid of your greed, hatred, and delusion. And the third is Sila Vata Paramasa, attachment to all kind of rituals, clinging to them, thinking that these rituals will bring me enlightenment. These rituals will clean my mind. This ritual can make me liberate from suffering, thinking that they will follow rituals very blindly. And these are the three or the ten fetters. Ten fetters. And the remaining seven are the clinging to material form, clinging to no cling no, clinging to uh, greed and hatred then number five, six clinging to for existence in form existence clinging to formless existence conceit restlessness and that means uh, i concept Asmi mana and restlessness and ignorance. These are the ten fetters. These three, without giving up these three, first three, you cannot get rid of your greed, hatred, and delusion. When you, this is the breakthrough by me, by attaining the first level of enlightenment or sotapanna. You don't give up all your greed, hatred, and delusion. But at least this is the breakthrough. Then again, number four, fourth set. Monks, without giving up three things, one will not be able to give up self-identity, skeptical doubts, and belief in tribes and rituals. What three? There are... Ayoniso Manasikara, 
ಕುಮ್ಮಗ್ಗ ಸೇವಣೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಚೇತಸೋ ಲೀನತ್ತ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಅಯೋನಿಸೋ ಮನಸ್ಸುಗಾರ ವಿತ್ ಅನ್ಮೈಂಡ್ಫುಲ್ ರಿಫ್ಲೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಅನ್ಮೈಂಡ್ಫುಲ್ ರಿಫ್ಲೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ರಿಫ್ಲೆಕ್ಷನ್ ವಿತೌಟ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದ ರೂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಯೋನಿಸೋ ದೆನ್ ಕುಮ್ಮಗ್ಗ ಪಟಿಪನ್ನ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಫಾಲೋವಿಂಗ್ ದ ರೋಂಗ್ ಪ್ಯಾತ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ರೋಂಗ್ ಡಿರೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಹೌ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಯು ಅಚೀವ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಇನ್ ದ ರೈಟ್ ಡಿರೆಕ್ಷನ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಫಾಲೋ ರೋಂಗ್ ಡಿರೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಯು ಗೋ ರೋಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ರೋಂಗ್ ಡಿರೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪುಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ರೈಟ್ ಪ್ಯಾತ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಚೇನ್ ಸೋಲಿ ಏನ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಲೇಜಿನೆಸ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಲೇಜಿ ಯು ಡೋಂಟ್ ಫಾಲೋ ದ ಧಮ್ಮ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವೈ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಎನ್ಲೈಟೈನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಒನ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಕೋಲ್ಡ್ ವಿರಿಯ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟೀಸ್ ದಟ್ ದೆನ್ ದೆನ್ ದ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಿಫ್ತ್ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ ನಾವು ಐ ಸೆಟ್ ಫೋರ್ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ಸ್ ಫಿಫ್ತ್ ಗ್ರೂಪ್ ಈಸ್ ಪುಟ್ ದ ಸೆಟ್ ವಿತೌಟ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಅಪ್ ತ್ರೀ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ವಿಲ್ ಒನ್ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಗಿವ್ ಅಪ್ ದ ಅನ್ವೈಸ್ ಅಟೆನ್ಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫಾಲೋವಿಂಗ್ ದ ರೋಂಗ್ ಪ್ಯಾತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಲಗಿಶ್ನೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದ ತ್ರೀ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಮುಟ್ಟ ಸತಿ ಅಸಂಪಜನ್ಯ ಚೇತಸೋ ವಿಕ್ಷೇಪೋ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ರೋಂಗ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ಫುಲ್ನೆಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಯು ಹಿಯರ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ಫುಲ್ನೆಸ್ ಯು ಥಿಂಕ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ಫುಲ್ನೆಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ನೋ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಸ್ಪೆಸಿಫೈ ಮೈಂಡ್ಫುಲ್ನೆಸ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ಫುಲ್ನೆಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅಜೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಇಟ್ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಬಿ ರೈಟ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ಫುಲ್ನೆಸ್ ಬೈ ಫಾಲೋವಿಂಗ್ ರೋಡ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ಫುಲ್ನೆಸ್ ಯು ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ದ ರಿಸಲ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ರೈಟ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ಫುಲ್ನೆಸ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಫೈಂಡ್ ರೈಟ್ಫುಲ್ನೆಸ್ ದೆನ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕೋಲ್ಡ್ ಮುಟ್ಟ ಸತಿ ರೋಂಗ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ಫುಲ್ನೆಸ್ ದೆನ್ ಅಸಂಪಜನ್ಯ ಅನ್ ಅವೇರ್ನೆಸ್ ಯು ನೋ ಸತಿ ಸಂಪಜನ್ಯ ಸಂಪಜನ್ಯ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಕಾಂಪ್ರಿಹೆನ್ಷನ್ ಒನ್ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಒನ್ ಡಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಕಾಂಪ್ರಿಹೆನ್ಷನ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ವಿಷನ್ ದೆನ್ ಒನ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗಿವ್ ಅಪ್ ದೋಸ್ ಡಿಫೈಲ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ದೆನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ದ ಅನ್ಸೆಟಲ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಮೆಂಟಲ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಾಕ್ಷನ್ ರೆಸ್ಲೆಸ್ನೆಸ್ ರೆಸ್ಲೆಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಫೈವ್ ಹಿಂಡ್ರೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇನ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅಡ್ವಾನ್ಸ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ರೆಸ್ಲೆಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಕೋಲ್ ಫೆಟ ದಿಸ್ ಫೈನ್ ಫೆಟ ಯುನೋ ಸ್ಕೈ ಬೌಂಡ್ ಫೆಟ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಸಟಲ್ ಫೆಟ ದಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಯು ದಟ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಓವರ್ಕಮ್ ಬೈ ಅಟೈನಿಂಗ್ ದ ಫುಲ್ ಎನ್ಲೈಟೆಂಡ್ ಅರಾಂತು ಅರಾಂತ್ ಪ್ಯಾರ್ ದೆನ್ ದ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಸೆಟ್ಸ್ ಬುದ್ಧ ಸೆಟ್ ಮಂಗ್ಸ್ ವಿತೌಟ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಅಪ್ ತ್ರೀ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಗಿವ್ ಅಪ್ ರೋಂಗ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ಫುಲ್ನೆಸ್ ಅನ್ಅವೇರ್ನೆಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೆಂಟಲ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರ್ಯಾಕ್ಷನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದ ತ್ರೀ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಸಿ ನೋಬಲ್ ವನ್ಸ್ ಅರಿಯಾನ ಅದರ್ಶನ ದೆನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಹಿಯರ್ ದ ನೋಬಲ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ ಅರಿಯ ಧಮ್ಮ ನಾಟ್ ಸೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಅರಿಯ ಧಮ್ಮ ನಾಟ್ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಅರಿಯಸ ಧಮ್ಮ ನೋಬಲ್ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ನೋಬಲ್ ವಾಸ್ ಧಮ್ಮ ದೆನ್ ಉಪಾರಂಭ ಚಿತ್ತ
They don't like to associate with noble ones. They are so pure, clean, noble. One who has impure, ignoble mind, Puthujjana, always mind is defiled. That person doesn't like to associate with the noble one. He feels very uncomfortable, very uncomfortable. That is what, when you remember Karne, background of Karne Metta Sutta, when the monks went to meditate, all the deities felt uncomfortable because the monks are very noble, holy, and they drove them away by creating various uh, unpleasant objects because they don't like to stay with them. So, so long as one does not like to associate with noble ones, number one. Second is not desiring to listen to nobles from Dhamma. When you associate with noble ones, you will uh, listen to noble Dhamma. And when you don't like to associate with them, how can you listen to noble Dhamma? So you hate the noble Dhamma, so how can you get rid of your, uh, what, do, what do you call, um, um, foolishness, uh, unmindfulness, wrong mindfulness, and so forth. In order to get rid of them, you have to associate with the noble ones, listen to their Dhamma. Third in that category is always trying to find faults in everybody. Even if a noble one gives a Dhamma, he finds a false in him, false in the Dhamma, false in the expression, false in the voice, and so forth. And if you keep find, trying to find faults, you never follow the Dhamma. Also, if you try to find faults in others, even among ordinary people, Buddha said, Paravajjana Parasitin, Chagujjana Sanyinu, Asava Tasava Dante, Arati Asava when somebody is always trying to find faults in others, that person is far away from destruction of defilements because he always is trying to find, find faults. Why is he trying to find faults always? Because his mind is corrupted. So he doesn't like to, he will be very jealous of, the, of someone who is doing well. So he finds trying to find faults. Then, <clears throat> Uh, number seven. I try to finish this very quickly. <coughs> Without giving up three things, one will not be able to give up dislike to see the noble ones, dislike to the noble son of Dhamma, and finding force in others. What are the three things? They are uh, restless of the mind, uddhacca, unrestrained, asangvara, and lack of morality, dusila. When one has these three things, restlessness, unrestrained mind, and lack of morality, that person cannot associate with the noble one, listen to Dhamma, and avoid getting rid of finding faults. Number eight, monks, without giving up three things, one will not be able to give up restlessness of mind, unrestrained, and lack of morality. What are the three things? That is, uh, asaddha, lack of confidence, asaddhyam, and unfriendliness, uh, avadanyuta and lack of laziness, kosajya, or being la lazy, kosajya. So, if one is lack of confidence, unfriendliness, and lazy, that person cannot get rid of the three previous defilements. Number nine, Monks, 
without giving up three things one will not be able to uh, give up lack of confidence unfriendliness and laziness what are the three things uh, that is lack of respect anadariyata and disobedience uh, dova satyata and friendship uh, uh, sorry associated with a bad friend bad friend papa mitata that is when one associate one does not have respect for those who are worthy of respect puja ji puja ni jana in mangala sutra you hear those worthy of respect must pay respect to them if somebody doesn't pay respect to them that is another defilement and he cannot get rid of the previous defilements and this obedience one should be obe- be obedient to the teachers parents noble ones obedient to the dhamma obedient to law flexible relax simple if he is very stubborn and arrogant he cannot overcome those other defilements previous defilements and also associating with bad friends who are the bad friends friends who invite you to come and drink have gambling have uh, various ways of drinking uh, and wasting time they are bad friends bad friends so that is number 9 Number ten, uh, monks, without giving up three things, one will not be able to give up, give up lack of respect, disobedience, and bad friendship. Cannot give up those things. What are the three things? They are moral shamelessness, ahirika, moral fearlessness, anuttap. and non diligence hello mad hello oh ma'am the chief ma'am ma'am the chief ma'am adane adu vaithi adane adala adane oh 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 ma'am i hope 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 ಮಾಮೋಫೋನ್ turn off your microphone oh thank you last set is the visa apply and the embassy ante you can mute upali you can mute upali yourself He's the one that's talking. Yeah. He's the one that has the microphone on. So you can mute them. Upali. Please close the microphone. Okay. Have you closed it? No, I don't think he heard you. but you can mute him uh yourself okay the last set is uh, shamelessness for doing wrong things and moral fearlessness somebody does is not afraid of doing anything wrong they think everything 
it is okay do anything you want he is not afraid of suffering in the next life suffering in this life getting into jail getting blamed bad name from the neighbors and country and so forth relatives and so forth if they are not afraid and they do anything wrong and uh, last is uh, non diligence uh, pamad negligence not my mi- not mindfulness not diligent when these three things are there that person cannot uh, overcome the other defilements so friends the when we go through all these things you can see how much uh, uh, we can achieve by following the right dhamma so to put all this this is a very long discourse i gave the summary and uh, still i can summarize in 5 minutes the positive side if one has moral shame moral fear and diligence due to diligence one is able to give up lack of respect disobedience and bad friendship with good friendship one is able to give up lack of confidence unfriendliness laziness with firm effort one is able to give up restlessness of mind unrestrained and lack of morality with good morality one is able to give up dislike to see the noble ones dislike to hear the noble ones teaching and fault finding mind with no fault finding mind one is able to give up wrong mindfulness unawareness and mental dis- distraction with an undistract with an undistracted mind one is able to give up the unwise attention following the wrong path and sluggishness of the mind with no sluggishness of mind one is able to give up self identity view skeptical doubt and attachment to mere rights and rituals with no skeptical doubt one is able to give up greed hatred and delusion having given up greed hatred and delusion one is able to give up birth decay and death this is the positive side of the uh, this uh, thayo dhamma sutta thayo dhamma sutta as i mentioned at the beginning you find in anguttara nikaya section 10 and if you like you can refer to that and i hope you all will use that text it is available online uh, go online and look at this text oh now i have to end the uh, session with my metta practice okay and okay let us do some meditation may all beings be happy and secure may all beings have happy minds whatever living beings there may be without exception weak or strong long or large medium short subtle or gross visible or invisible living near or far born or coming to birth may all beings have happy minds let no one deceive another no despise anyone anywhere neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another as a mother who risks her own life 
to protect her only child, even so to her own living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate her own world, a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred or resentment, whether standing, walking, or sitting, lying down or whenever awake, one should develop this mindfulness, this is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision, removing desire for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the womb. With this metta thought, friends, let us do some meditation. We have almost uh, 20 minutes. I took uh, 10 minutes from our meditation time to explain the discourse. And however, we have 20 minutes to meditate. And we sit quietly. You don't need much instruction since you have been meditating. And please continue your practice.
By means of this meritorious deed, may I never join with the foolish, may I join always with the wise, until the time I attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering, may the fear struck be free from fear, may the grieving be free from grief, so too may all beings be. From the highest realm of existence to the lowest, May all beings arisen in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Oh, and so we started this meditation with metta and end with metta. At the beginning we recited a section of Karani Metta Sutta and at the end we recite these which are composed by some ancient very noble holy persons with compassionate heart to share their loving friendliness with everybody. So, friends, similarly, may all beings in hospitals recover very soon and return to their normal life and continue Dhamma practice, metta, mindfulness, so that they can get rid of their samsaric suffering. May all the doctors, nurses, and hospital staffs who dedicate their life, sacrifice their comfort, seek their own life, because they also can expose to various contagious diseases, and yet they take all the risk out of compassion for these people, and may they all find peace, happiness, find liberation from samsaric suffering. All those who are in various troubled spots in, at places where are a lot of disc discriminations, war zones, poverty-stricken areas, may they all find somehow peace and practice them and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering, not to have any more discrimination and so on. And may all others whose categories I have not mentioned, we understand that there are all kind of living beings all over the universe, visible or invisible, far or near, gross or subtle. May they all find peace, solace and comfort and finally attain total liberation from samsaric suffering. And I wish you all peace and happiness. Sadhu, 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 Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you, Bhante. Great teachings, good health, long life. Thank you.